closed, and Ashok said he was going to be a little late. Um. Okay. Are we recording or? Not yet. Okay. Okay, go ahead. Okay, I'd like to call the Conservation Advisory Council for the Town of Neskuna to order. This is the February 2nd, 2022 meeting. Um, Laura, could you do the roll call, please? So, Ellen Daviero. Here. Ashok, um, I know it's going to be a little late. Chelsea Ratner. Here. Mickey Vizoli was excused tonight. Steve Burkholder. I'm going to double check my email. Um, and then Ryana. Here. And Chairman Schreyer. Here. Okay, great. Um, in our packets we received from Laura, there were um, minutes from two prior meetings, December 1st and January 5th. Let's take um, December 1st. Um, did anybody have any corrections or additions that they wanted to make? You have to turn your microphone on, Ellen. <laughs> yeah, no. Oh, I didn't notice any corrections. Okay. Anybody else? Hearing that, I'd um, take a motion to accept the minutes. I second. Okay. Um, all in favor, say aye. 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 Any nays? Yeah. For the record, Ashok just entered and voted aye. <laughs> okay. Okay, let's move to the um, January 5th meeting. Did anybody have any corrections for or comments for the January 5th meeting minutes? So the only thing I just wanted to say was that um, I really appreciated the effort to go um, that was put into the notes to um, cite all of the um, parts of the, um, you know, define what, you know, building codes and what was being done. I, I appreciated that and I thought it was nicely done. So I guess I don't have the proper terminology, but. Yeah, no, I thought it really um, captured what we were trying to say. So thanks, Laura, for putting it together. Oh, thanks, guys. That's Jean. She does a good job. Oh, Jean. Sorry. <laughs> um, I make a move that we accept the minutes. Do we have a second? I can second that. Okay. All in favor, say aye. 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 Um, any nays? Hearing none, um, let's accept the minutes of January 5th. Okay, um, moving on to the business of the day. Um, privilege of the floor. Do we have anybody wanting to speak or? Yes, uh, just a couple of things. Okay, One, uh, why don't you um, state your name and your address and you have the floor. Okay, Roy Thornton, 1337 Regent Street, Neskiuna. And uh, I've been advocating for the uh, pollinator and grassland bird habitat on the top of the large part of the cap landfill. I, I do wanna say thank you for your consideration. And um, I don't really have any new presentations today. I do uh, want to note that over 30 people have now agreed to kind of co-sign letters that, uh, that I send to you and to the highway department. Just briefly, uh, Ruth Bond is president of ECOS and she's on the call waving at you right now. <laughs> One of the co-signers. Uh, then I do have a couple of questions. Uh, have you gotten any feedback from the town or the highway department on whether they're ready to modify mowing on the landfill cap? Or do we hear anything? Or 
I yeah. don't, I have not heard feedback and I know nothing was directed specifically to the CAC on that, but I haven't heard any feedback either. Okay. Then uh, is there any chance of including that landfill cap or maybe even both caps in the low mow initiative that you've uh, put forth to the town? I think last time we talked that, Laura, correct me if I'm mistaken, but the um, cap above the landfill had special requirements and um, it was unclear whether the um, town would mow that or not. I know last year they didn't mow it that often, but it seemed like there were some concerns about it being on top of a landfill. Well, there are concerns on a capped landfill that woody growth would not be allowed to penetrate the clay cap. Mm -hmm. And I'm pretty well um, certain that mowing once a year or maybe even once every two years would prevent that woody growth. So I don't think you're gonna run afoul of any of the DEC or uh, EPA requirements. Yeah, I, I think the other um, factor was there was a reluctance because they were concerned that the residents um, would complain and not understand why we weren't doing um, regular mowing, but um, we can reapproach the, um, the the group again. We can approach mm -hmm. them again, Roy, and talk to them about it. I think totally. last year it was just a brand new initiative and there was a little reluctance there. Okay, and then um, you're going to cover progress on the low mow initiative later in the meeting? Yeah, we're on the agenda. Yep. Can okay. I just talk about it now. So we get I'm done. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Ruth, would you like to address the board at all? I think you're on mute. I just wanted to say that I'm in support of it. And um, the ECOS board is pretty much in support of it also. The initiative to encourage pollinators and grassland birds. It's definitely something we're and excited about the possibility or the initiative. Uh, Chairman, I did want to note that uh, Nicholas Klemenzik from the Schenectady County Soil and Water Conservation District did call. He wasn't able to attend the meeting, but he also like I think Roy mentioned this before, but uh, said that he would be happy to support and help this in any way that the county can. In, including the possibility of uh, helping you find the equipment to do the, the wildflower plantings um, for your low mow initiative as well. Yeah, I, had a yeah, good, I, I had want to a, thank you, Roy, for sending that information on to the to the committee. Um, it was very um, it was very interesting to read, and I hope it will help us um, in this endeavor. Great. Uh, if I may quickly add, um, you know, one of the things that. Uh, you know, uh, Chairman Strayer mentioned about uh, the concerns of residents and all that. I, I'm strongly of the opinion that uh, good signage would go a long way towards mitigating any concerns that anybody may have. And as I've said before, uh, we have similar initiatives at um, at Union College and, you know, uh, you know, sometimes the question arises during alumni weekend, the alumni coming and saying like, hey, you know, this is my campus. Why are, um, you know, these meadows here? Like, why is it in all grass? So we are trying to mitigate that by, by having signage that, and explaining that uh, it's a deliberate act to promote biodiversity and you know, we're not being sloppy or anything like that. So, um, you know, uh, Ruth Bonds here, and uh, she mentioned something about ECOS, like, uh, a lot, you know, this is like a process uh, with lots of dialogue here and there, uh, but 
if somebody wants to take on the responsibility of A, designing a sign, oh. uh, go ahead. Yeah, maybe let Ellen jump in. She's okay. Oh, I mean, you can finish. Uh, yeah. So, so I, I that's was that's what I was going to say to uh, to have signage. It's something that Ecos um, might get interested in doing. We haven't taken it up officially to, to the board yet, but it is something that we've we are interested in and might be interested in. Developing signage. It's the some sort of thing that we have done in the past. Also, um, programs, educational programs, which we do, which is how this all started yeah, with ECOS's involvement, is that Roy yeah. gave us to uh, a program. See, right? to our yeah. And then can you do the, can you do the link one? Or, I can send that to you. So we do have two signs that we have that um, I have made. It's just, um, you know, they're a little, um, um, it's, it's not like my technique. Like I, I'm not, I'm not. <laughs> so this is the one that I designed, or I can say that I put together and my husband helped me <laughs> do the background. So this is what I would like. This is, you know, I, I, you know, it's, anyways. So you can tell me what you think or make suggestions or, you know, and I. Yeah, so it says, why is the grass taller here? This area has been des designated as a low mow zone. By allowing the grass and natural vegetation to grow, we are increasing habitat for insects and wildlife, saving energy and reducing CO2 emissions by not using mowers, promoting sustainable landscapes, encouraging native plant growth and providing an environment for observation. I mean, like the only change I would make to this, which I think we could do pretty easily is make the symbol maybe white with not the square background. But yes. I like it. I feel like ready to go. <laughs> yeah, I, um, yeah. And then I, I also did one with um, boba links do you have that one? I might, I might be able to find it. Hold on. Hold on one second. I can send it to you. So I did one for Boba Links as well. Do you have it? And and that one I and this one I, I haven't uh, done anything. Um, this one? Let me just see. Nope. Nope. Um, okay. But I haven't, it's a, yeah. Do you want me to? No, you don't have it yet. You can. Oh, no, you how can do I share, can you? How can I share? But I'm not in the meeting. Yeah, no, I have to see it. Okay, hold on a second. Let me see. Um, if I can, I email from here. I, I'm pretty sure I sent this. Let's get you guys can keep talking. I I can find it and bring it up. Um, Ellen, what's the status of the signs? Like, are they printed? Do so they they're not printed. They're not anything. First, we have to. Um, you know, this is sort of like, um, you know, I kind of took this on myself and I, um, okay. we want to have them um, printed by, um, in coordination with the, um, um, the, department. the department, the yes, okay. the um, department of, what are they, transportation? Highway department, Highway department. because they have, uh, they buy the big sheets and then that, so really we were just waiting on, I had designed one and it didn't have a nice background and I was looking for a background and I was trying to figure out how to do it, but it really kind of had fallen on the wayside because it's really not my forte, but this is another one that I built, I made. Oops, it's getting there. So I had kind of made these and I was kind of hoping that somebody else would 
So this is another one that I did. That's, I like that. Those so, are and those are bobo links, right, Ellen? Yeah. So there's an artist in um, in um, on Cape Cod, and she works for um, a bird, a bird, a native bird um, house place on in I think in Cape Cod. And um, when I was looking online, she had these, and then I asked if I could use the drawing on a on a on a town sign, and she said absolutely. And then they sent this to me. So just a quick comment. Um, I think in terms of public relations, it's a good idea to have birds uh, featured, birds and butterflies. And um, well, not so much any insects except pollinators and butterflies. A lot of people are not in favor of insects. <laughs> I mean, yeah, there are the straightforward ones that, um, right, that you can just buy that are just around bees or whatever, around birds or whatever. So, yeah, I think the we just have to make a decision. Hey, Ray, I saw you raised your hand. Do you have something to add? Yes, I have um, a copy of the sign that was made in 2013, and there's one of them still standing in the little field just below the the uh, composting zone. I have a copy of that that I could send to, I guess, Laura. And then I also have pictures of, uh, you know, a monarch a, in color, a color photograph of a bobolink, and um, maybe even a savanna sparrow. So I could, I could send those to Laura if you like. Yeah, I think that would be good if you could send it. So I, I understand. So I think the thing is, is that I had those pictures, but I couldn't get them. So we just need someone that will commit to making the sign. So Laura can't make the sign. <laughs> She's hey. way, way, way too busy. So you can, we can send her all, you know, things, but really we, somebody else has to do it. So that was sort of why I put those together. I did try to use the, I think I, I originally, let me see, I can look at my notes, but I did make one with the colored ones that you, um, that um, Rob had made before that had sent. Let me just see if I can find them. Hey, Laura, I have a question. When would the highway department um, make up these signs? What What's our time frame for this? Well, I think, well, they're, they don't take too long, like maybe max a month turnaround. Mm -hmm. um, but like we actually sent them like these signs because Alan's been working on them for a long time. And yeah, we, I think they're great signs. And we well, um, we sent them and like they don't have the capability of putting them together. And Alan got quotes from, you know, local businesses and everything. Mm -hmm. But I think what they really need, which is what Ellen just finished, because I mean, I'm, I keep trying to do it, um, but is us to send them a single file, you know, of the sign ready to be printed because they just – they that seems to be the only way to make it work. <laughs> well, I can take these two, format them so, I mean, to. I have, I have his picture. Yeah, I feel yes. I feel like when you said that, Roy, we definitely received those from you before. Um, but we're not like. I mean, I can be a graphic designer, but I need like multiple hours to do it in my life. <laughs> so I tried to put that. I tried to take the the. Um, so, I mean, I, I don't think that I have Roy's original um, Bobolink sign. I think that I've seen it, but I don't think that I actually have it on my thing. But I do have the picture of the Bobolink, the two Bobolinks that he took a picture of, I think, maybe a male and a female together. Is that your picture, Roy? Uh, it's mostly single males, okay. uh, the ones that we've, we've taken. Okay. Um, I, I'm a little confused at who's talking here. Uh, who, uh, who was actually trying to put together the sign? Ellen. I, Ellen. Me. Can you okay. see? I don't know if you can see me or not. Well, I see somebody in a mask. Yeah. That's me. <laughs> okay. Um, and I'm sorry I've missed your last name. It's Ellen DeViro. D-A-V-R-O? 
D A V as in Victor I E R O. I E R O. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, would you like me to send you individual photographs? Would you like me to try to put together a sign? Um, I think that there may need to be two different signs. One for the Low Mo Initiative, which is probably not the right configuration for bobolinks. Uh, if you decide that you want to do a low mo area on the top of the uh, large part, uh, large landfill cap, then that would be the place that would be appropriate to have bobolinks. Either one of them could have butterflies. The other thing that might be included in a sign is a QR code. The early sign that was designed by the uh, Capital Area uh, Audubon Society had a QR code that linked them right back in to the uh, Audubon Society website. And you, you might want to do the same thing for Niskayuna. Well, that could be a stick on to go on a sign later, maybe. Well, I mean, you can send us the pictures again. Yeah. Um, I think we do want to try and finalize the signs so that they can be put up in early spring because even though the initiative was approved because we didn't have the signs up, the mowing never really stopped last fall. So what we think is once we get the signs up and we can run string between the signs and stuff like that, we'll really start to see this take shape. Um, yeah. But I, I do think I the ones say... that Ellen has, I know you can't really see them on my screen too well, but they're, I mean, they're uh, pretty darn close. I like the one with the grass. That I find that attractive. I, I have a suggestion here, um, Roy, um, if you want to sort of um, put together a sign and send it to the committee, then what I think we could do is maybe at the next meeting, Laura, we could just look at them. Um, I know Ellen has put an awful lot of work in her signs and then maybe pick two out of the three or um, take a look at them and just decide so we can sort of just move this forward. Yeah, that works. Well, I, I hate to be the crude one here, but uh, somewhere someone has to pay for it. Um, so, and uh, you know, does anyone know where the money is coming from? So I, Ray said that he will provide the um, stands for the signs, like because when they take down road signs, they recycle them. So we don't have to buy any of like the metal Stands. So we only have to buy the, you know, the, the printed metal signs and they're not terrible. And the CAC does have a budget. So I think we're okay for that. I mean, I'll see when we get a quote, it's, I, I obviously can't spend like a thousand dollars, but like, they're, like if we're buying the equivalent of like the handicap signs, I, I don't think they're, I think they're like in the range of like 40 to $60 a sign or something. Yeah. Thank you. So okay. I will uh, put together a, um, a, a couple of signs. And Ellen, if you could send me an image of what you've got. Yeah, I can send you like basically, you know, I um, the template that I use, you know, that I used, and then you can just, you know, move stuff around. You know, you can, I basically did it like the, um, the handicap sign. I did it in the square. We did, she did, you did have a round one too, right? Yeah. You can show that one. Yeah, I was trying to bring it up. There is a round one that I really like. <laughs> but um, the problem is we don't really have the graphic for it. So when we sent it to try and get it ordered, like, I think because we don't have it like fully, you know, like somebody would actually have to make it on a graphic design. I'll show it to you. Hold on. Program. It hasn't been ordered. Yeah. There are a variety of formats that might work. The, uh, the bitmap format, which is a very large file. There's the uh, JPG format, which is pretty standard for, for photographs. Um, you can convert these to that or to an Adobe uh, PDF format. So it depends on what the sign, sign maker needs. This is, it's, I know, I don't know how to zoom in on it here. Hold on. Oh, 
Although this one is a bee, not a butterfly. Well, anyway, can you kind of see it? Not really. <laughs> yes, sort of. You could grab it with the snipping tool or try that. Well, let me make it bigger. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. But yeah, there's a couple of them that we could bring back and maybe make a memo maybe on, which would move it forward. Maybe based on what happens with the highway committee too, we can wrap everything up, you know, into a memo to the town board if we wanted or something. Yeah. Okay. All right. Why don't we, um, do we, this is a good discussion. Do we have anything else in the low mo um, biodiversity initiative in the reports, Laura? Um, since we've taken this chunk that way, Roy and um, Ruth wouldn't have to stick around in the meeting if they didn't want to. No, I think Ellen and I were just going to show you guys the signs and see if, you know, you wanted to move forward with them. Okay. Is that right, Ellen? Yeah, and yeah. yeah. By all means, if there's somebody on the the um, CAC that is can you know is good and handy with a little uh, you know artwork or whatever, you know, feel free to step in and be and say, yeah, I could fix that. <laughs> I actually thought the signs were pretty good, Ellen. Thank so. you. Okay, um, so what I would suggest we do is at the next meeting, if we can just get all the um, proposed signs out and we can just sort of um, go through them and then make a decision because by the time we get it printed and everything, spring will be right around the corner. We'll want to be putting those signs in. All right, so just to recap, Roy, you want me to send you, I'm, I'll send you this um, the one that the one that I made just made here, and then the other things that I've made. I'll just send them to you, and you can look at them and see what you think, or I mean, change or make your own, or that sort of thing. I I can work from them and then send back my ideas, and then you can do with them what you will. Yeah. Um, send them in uh, in high res. I will do my best. <laughs> will do my best. <laughs> Well, thank you very much for taking that on, Roy. I appreciate it. Um, why don't we, do we have anything else on this topic we wanna to talk about? No, I okay. guess, uh, so my, just my last question is, is like, um, what are the next steps? So do we have to confirm with the highway department that they're not gonna mow the cap? Do we have to ask the, town board are they not going to mow the town cap are we do we have to say um we have to put a resolution forward do we have to you know before you know we plant or get the equipment or whatever i, I guess i don't know what the next step is besides signage well i think on the cap i think we should probably approach the highway department again just to ask them Okay. I, okay, but I feel like the highway department's not the. Are they the ones making the decision about whether to mow or not mow, or? Well, I think you have to start with them. I don't know, Laura. What do you think? I mean, it's their okay. sphere of influence. Okay. I yeah. I didn't know if it had to come from the town board. That's all. I'm just wondering. I didn't know. You know. Okay. Okay, I got I mean, it. Now. It may ultimately, I don't know, Laura, we may have to get it from the town board or. I, I will check because resolution? I know we had approval for our LOMO map. Um, and I don't know if that was through resolution or not, but it seems like it was. So I'll go see if we have a resolution uh, for it or how that approval was done. Um, okay. And then, um, you know, I can. I can double check because obviously we have new administration and a new town attorney if we need to do anything else or more or different um, so that yeah, we can I, be ready. I just would feel more comfortable going through, you know, all the stakeholders again. Yeah. At least for the town cap, not the Lomo area we already identified. Yeah. Yeah, because we changed the boundaries on the map so that they would yeah. get approved after we met with all the neighbors. 
because they wanted to make yeah, sure we met with the neighbors. And I know that I, Ashok's nodding his head because we met with neighbors and then we met with the town board and with the highway superintendent and it took a while to get it all figured out. Um, but then we didn't have the signs and they kept mowing it. <laughs> so I, so I guess my, so, um, so the area where, it, um, that we got approved for the Lomo over by where they play, um, where the, uh, golf is and where we set up that barrier and we replanted plants from, um, from Kelts Farm. So is that the area that is being um, designated as where we would use the machinery and plant the wildflowers? It's, so yes. So we, okay. So, so do we have to now then, we just now need to coordinate between the highway department and the, I'm sorry, you said Dan from Schenectady? Uh, I'm sorry, I don't remember his name. He said Nick. about the, Nick, Nick about yes. the equipment to use the equipment. Uh, well, we would coordinate that all with highway and parks, but it might help make highway feel like it's less burdensome if we can come with help, right? So we can say, we've got these boundaries. We're ordering the signs. We have a lot of community support. Um, you know, Roy, those letters that you mentioned are always helpful. Like when you're ready, make sure that they make it to the town board. <laughs> and then, um, you know, and then we can say, uh, and we also have help from Schenectady County Soil and Water. Um, because one of the comments we heard when we were reaching out to the neighbors is they didn't just want the grass to grow long because they were afraid it was going to look scraggly. So if we also do plots where, you know, Nick, so because what he said to me on the phone was that, you know, he can provide the equipment, yeah, to like, dig the trows and put the flower and he can bring the wildflower seed and stuff like that. Um, I think that would be helpful. Okay. So we just need, so I guess we just have to, we, all right. So we have to coordinate that and then when it needs to be planted. Yeah. Cause I know fall is actually the best time to do that, but I hopefully you could still do it in the spring. We could see. Okay. I mean, I think we have enough rain in the spring that we should be able to give it a go and, Okay. So, yeah, all right. So, hopefully. so, all right. So I, I just want to clarify. So we're going to, so for the low mode for this year, we're going to try, we're going to try to get the area where we had um, that we already have approval by where we have started to already plant wildflowers to do that. And then we're going to see about just not mowing the cap. And, 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 and that's the, those are the two areas that we're going, trying to go after to uh, um, this year. Is that okay? Yeah. Roy, <laughs> did you have something you wanted to add? Yes. Uh, I'm going to, um, <laughs> maybe it'll brief, be brief, <laughs> briefer than today, but I'm going to go to the highway department meeting tomorrow night, or no, tomorrow morning, excuse me, and just sort of ask these same questions of, uh, of Ray Smith. And, uh, We'll, we'll see what happens there. It's just kind of keeping it in his consciousness rather than demanding anything or pushing anything too hard. Yeah. I kind of just wanted to get a, an, an idea of the scope of what we thought. I just want to make sure we're all on the same page and we've like specifically said what were the things that we're trying to accomplish and then see where we can go. I'm not saying that we're going to get them all done, but anyways, that's just what I was trying to do. Right. I sent that same information on seeds and equipment to uh, Ray Smith. Great. Okay. Um, let's move on. So um, the environmental assessment form referrals, and we have two tonight. First one is EAF 2022-1. 1930 Hillside Avenue, and um, there's a special use permit um, within a place of worship to put in a daycare. Yeah, so I'll um, I'll share my screen on this one quickly. Um, this is one that you guys wouldn't even necessarily typically see because there's no really exterior changes to the site, but it does require a special use permit and a special use permit does trigger um, environmental review. So um, 
you know, the agenda statement has all the information that the planning board was looking at. So how many kids are coming? It, it only um, operates after school. So it's an after school drop off. Um, and then in the summer, it's a summer camp. So all day in the summer, um, although traffic always tends to be less in the summer. So, um, this is kind of aerial of the site. It's an existing church. It had an existing daycare in the church, um, at one time. Um, but it, it, the use has expired because it's been over a year since there was a daycare in that church. So our code allows for the co-location. Um, the space is there. That's on this page. It's the basement of the church. They've outlined where the spaces are. I think it's pretty similar to what the church was before. Um, and it's no more than 50 children. So I didn't know if you guys had any specific questions um, on it. They're pretty straightforward. No trees are coming down, no pavements changing. Um, you know, the parking lot is now going to be mixed use, obviously. Sometimes it'll have cars and sometimes it'll be a play area, but that's okay because the church isn't in session. Uh, this church is, uh, you know, quite literally in my backyard. Um, and I, I, I know the people, it's, I have no objections. Yeah, looking at this plan here, it looks like, you know, it's well suited for um, this use. Looks like they have good traffic flow. Um, looks like the area behind the church is wooded, so there's a, there's a buffer behind it. And um, I think a daycare center provides a lot of community service. Yeah, we did hear one concern at the planning board meeting on traffic. Um, but I think it was a more generalized concern because people feel like there's a lot of cut through traffic from Hillside to Providence. Um, but like this doesn't even generate traffic for drop off because the students are being dropped off with a bus and then pickup is usually staggered. So at the planning board, we talked about it. You know, the parents are allowed to pick up, you know, from, well, any time onward really, but most of them don't start picking up until like 3.30. So like from 3.30 to 6.00 you know, picking up 50 kids, a couple kids an hour, probably planning board didn't feel like that that was a huge impact to traffic. Now in the summer, they won't have buses, right? No, in the summer, um, it would be individual drop off. Although yeah. the summer traffic patterns are always different. Yeah. So can I just ask a question? So uh, prior to this, was it, um, did the daycare handle 50, um, 50 students, you know, pretty easily. Cause it said something, I thought I read it was only like two rooms in the downstairs, but then open playroom. So I was just, that was my only, it seemed like. Yeah. Clark, can you just confirm this? I believe in the email that we got today or yesterday, the applicant confirmed that the old daycare had 50 students. I believe that's what she said. I don't think it's different than what was there before. I think that's true. We got that email today. So I think it's the same number of students that was there before. The only thing we haven't confirmed is what was licensed, but that's um, the memory of the people who have run the church through both programs. So is it um, my understanding that the only reason why they even are coming for a special use permit is because they had a lapse? Right. Yep. Yep. Because if you don't, if you're not, if the use discontinues for a year, then the special use permit is is voided, and you have to do a new one if the use comes back. I'm just gonna check that email. Hold on. It's okay. I did. Does anybody else have any other questions about the daycare? Yeah, so if you, oh, did you have a question, Ellen? No, I, oh, I don't okay. have any questions. I, no, it seems perfectly fine. If I just, my only one was if, if they had had, if they could handle 50 students like they had prior, like, that's yeah. All. So um, the former operator of was Kitty Carr Nursery School, and they 
informed the new applicant that the daycare ran at 1930 Hillside from the 1970s until 2012 and averaged around 50 children Monday through Friday. They were not aware of any traffic complaints. Okay. So, uh, okay. So, I'm take my cheap printer. Um, does the proposed action create a material conflict with an adopted land use plan or zoning regulations? Um, I'll just go, it's a no, yeah, um, yeah, because it's a specific use under our zoning. Um, not, okay. Will the proposed action result in a change in the use or intensity of use of land? I know you guys can't see. Ishak and Ellen are shaking their head. No. <laughs> no. I. You know, if they, they had this daycare before, it's not going to change the yeah. use or the demand. Um, will the proposed action impair the character or quality of the existing community? Yeah, I see a couple head shaking. I, I also would say that's probably a no. Um, yeah. I'll do these ones quickly. The proposed action have impact on a critical environmental area. There is none there. No. Um, will the proposed action result in an adverse change in the existing level of traffic or affect existing infrastructure for mass transit, biking, or walkways? No. Yeah. No. Will the proposed action cause an increase in the use of energy? Not negligible, maybe? I yeah, mean, no. There is, law. there is some. But. There is some. Will the proposed action impact existing public-private water, public-private wastewater? Again, very small. I mean, if the kids wash hands. I mean. Yeah, no. It's <laughs> and it was there before, so it's not yeah, like it's our max there or something there, but. Will the proposed action impair the character or quality of important historic, archaeological, architectural, or aesthetic resources? No. No. Um, will the proposed action result in adverse change to natural resources, wetlands, water bodies, groundwater, flora, and fauna? No. No. Will the proposed action result in an increase in the potential for erosion, flooding, or drainage? No. No. Yeah, they're not changing any impervious. So. No, there's no land change. So. Yeah. Will the proposed action create a hazard to environmental resources or human health? Assuming the kids behave, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you never know. <laughs> okay, so based on that, the part three would be a motion, Chairman. Yeah. So um, does somebody want to make a motion? I make a motion that this is a solid negative deck. I'll second that motion. Did you All want in favor to... say aye. 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 Well, do we have any nays? Hearing none, the motion carries. Great. So that's going for public hearing. Ooh, sorry. At the town board at the end of this month, hopefully. Great. Okay. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry. Did somebody say something? No. Oh, okay. All right. Let's move on to the second one. This is the EAF 2022-2, the Historic Preservation Code. Um, we've looked at various um, iterations of this code. We've had a lot of discussions on it. Um, Laura, do you want to um, talk to the code and explain um, what's different about it or what, so what's adopted? It hasn't actually changed from the last time that we looked at it. Um, it's meant to address um, some holes in our historic preservation protection. So um, it kind of formalizes the historic homes that we have in our town and formalizes the historic uh, committee and um, allows for the designation of historic buildings by the town of Niskayuna. And then the one thing that we had been working through that we went back and forth was the demolition of existing structures that are, you know, de deemed yeah. historic. Like the 49 years is kind of a funny thing because New York state says anything over 50 years is historic. So I know we went back and forth on those numbers. But really, there's supposed to be some kind of a process so that if somebody wants to remove a historic building in town, at least we have some, we have code that allows us to have a conversation with them. And then the question was, do we want to add something so that we're actually able to deny them the removal of the historic home? 
Or do we want to just make sure that there's a waiting period, a cooling off period, and a discussion period where we can document the historic home? Um, as written, I believe this Do you have anything else more to add or? Yeah, I mean, I think as written this one allows for the demolition. It does. Yeah. Yeah, um, it does. It does. You have either 30 days. Or 90 days. Or 90 yeah. days. Yeah. So I think we had said we wanted a longer period, which was why the 90 days was written into it. Um, the, the legal department wanted to look at whether or not we could actually deny the demolition because I think. Right, Dart, you found a code that allows for the denial of Yeah, the there's actually quite a few codes out there. Yeah. Um, so I had it on for action because I was thinking we know that there's some movement on potential purchase and potential demolition of some historic homes in our town. And I think that um, it would be good to get a code in place. And because it takes a relatively long time to adopt it, because it has to go to public hearing at the town board, um, my recommendation would is that we would take action and say that a historic code, you know, what the environmental impacts were of this draft historic preservation code. But um, it may change from this from now to when it gets finally adopted. Um, but I can bring the changes back to you or you guys could wait, but I don't want to wait too long <laughs> because I do want just when you're adopting code, sometimes you have to have the seeker closed before you can call a public yeah. hearing. So I just want to um, have us look at it. Even if we do a determination, it doesn't mean we could continue to make uh, recommendations on any, you know, tweaks, but I think this is going to be the bulk of the code that we adopt anyway. So you know, we could look at it and then say, this is our recommendation for how you um, approach the demolition. Um, or we could have it come back, but I wouldn't want to see it go more than one more CAC meeting is my recommendation. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you, Laura, that this is something that's extremely timely. We need to get it done. Um, I personally, though, have a concern about the code as written because basically we just have this cooling off 90 day period. And if the person who wants to demo the house or structure doesn't cooperate, I mean, they could just let the days, let the 90 day period pass and they would demo the um, property anyway. Um, I think we really need to put, um, you know, some more um, protections. And I think, you know, in some of the examples and some of the questions that we raised in the earlier um, times we've seen this, I personally would like to see them in, in the law. And I, I think part of my concern is if we adopt this as is, it's going to be more difficult to make the changes later because the push to get it adopted will have waned. Yeah, that makes sense to me. Um, so I guess the question would be, would you guys want to take action on it with that recommendation written to your action? Or would you like to give it one more month to see if the code can be modified and changed? I think it's okay either way. Who's How does the committee feel about that? So the planning board wants to see that that same change that Dart just asked. I understand. So who's making the changes to the code? Like Would be who? the legal department. Okay. So yeah. and has and so has a legal department been um, given the information that they? Well, so Dennis was working with our old town attorney. I don't know that the new town attorney has gotten hold of this code and the changes that want to be made yet. Um, okay. But you know. I think that it's doable for us to try and make, I mean, she actually has to weigh in. I know Paul Briggs felt like we should be able to put that in there, but um, yeah, she hasn't weighed in on that yet, but you know, as long as it's legally doable and the town board is on board with that. <laughs> so do we just have to say that that's what we want or do we need to present the, uh, what, um, what it looks like in other municipalities where they have more teeth or does she, or do we just say, this is good, but this is what we want. Um, well, so um, 
It doesn't necessarily change the seeker analysis if you say, I think, or we think that the environmental impacts of this code, you know, are are not going to be harmful to the environment, but we do think that you should add a section to the end, right? For seeker review, that isn't going to nullify the seeker. You can do a, a you know, a declaration with conditions or recommendations, um, but if you weren't comfortable with the code moving forward quite yet, as is, then you could wait on your seeker determination until you have that more formal language to see if it can be written in there. Um, which is why I say it really, it's really okay probably to do it either way. <laughs> Start so, did provide. So, so did the, so, I mean, so I guess my question is, is that, is that like, I mean, if this hasn't changed very much since the last time that we had it, then are we, I guess I'm just wondering who's going to change it. Like who is that? Yeah. We're waiting on the legal department. And, okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And, you know, I couldn't actually tell you, like maybe it, spurs them a little bit if we do, you know, a declaration on it and say, this is a condition of our declaration. But, you know, maybe you guys would want to see that written into the code before you took action on it. I don't know which way. Well, Laura, what if, what if the CAC approved it with that condition of the declaration, but then either Elena or someone says that can't be done, then does the CAC's approval with, without what they wanted added still hold or how, how does that play out? Um, to well, me, it feels like you should wait until you, wait. you know exactly what the yeah, okay. I sort of agree with you, Clark, on this. Mike, without having that clause in there, I think it actually puts historic residents more at risk long-term because what it does is it gives the town a false sense of security that we are protecting our historic um, infrastructure um, the best possible way, and then we'll end up getting burned, and then we'll have to go back and relook at it. I, I would recommend we wait until it gets um, fixed. I, I know we need to get this done, though. I know there's pressing matters on this, but from my perspective, I think it, I would feel more comfortable with the language in front of me. I'm okay with that. I just wanted to quickly talk about like, you know, like this, the February meeting like today is light on the agenda and, you know, we've had pretty lengthy meetings uh, recently. And, you know, if the CVS that, you know, that development, if that comes back, now I'm, I'm okay with waiting, but I also want to be aware of like, um, how, how long do you wait? Well, I think if the initiative is to get it back by next meet in a month, is that the goal, Laura? Yeah, I wouldn't want to wait any longer than that. I would want to make sure that we were comfortable with taking action on it by, because you guys, only because you guys are such an early meeting by March. Yeah. Are, are we all generally in agreement that everything other than the 49-year business is controversy-free, doesn't need any more discussion because if other parts of it need discussion, we might as well have it now. You know what I mean? Like, like when we have a relatively light agenda. Yeah, no, I, my only sticking point with this is the demolition part. And, um, I would just like to see, you know, if the historic structure is found to be significant to this unit that the they can withhold an appropriate a certificate of appropriateness for its demolition, you know, and then of course we'll have to put in a um, procedure for the land landowner or the builder to um, to appeal that. Laura, there was there was there was a couple of sample codes I sent the town. I, I don't know if you still have. Yeah, them. I think it was Bedford. I do still have yeah, that Bedford one. Was. Yep. yep. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, and Dart, we already mentioned we're probably going to talk about this um, Friday morning at the Economic okay. Development Committee meeting on what those timelines are. I just wanted to make sure their timelines lined up with our timelines. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> but um, yeah, I I don't want to go into another construction season without a historic code in place. It's just my concern. No, I agree with you. Okay, so I'm hearing bring it back for the beginning of March um, and try and have it be as final as it can be for you guys to take action on it. Yeah, okay, sounds good. How's that? Yep, it works for me. Everybody in agreement with that? Mm-hmm. Works for me. Okay. All right, I just deleted it. Just bear with, bear with me. I just deleted my agenda here on my computer. I just need to get it back. Okay. Okay, the next item. I, I got it back. Oh, you got it? Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so we'll take action um, next month on this um, after we look at the changes. Okay, discussion items. Um, 1748 Union Street, and we have a sketch plan, and a developer wants to take the existing bank structure there, turn it into a fast food restaurant or a restaurant. Yeah. And then take the adjacent house and take it down and make it a parking lot. Um, yes. And this one that doesn't need a whole lot of discussion. I'm putting it on your radar because um, it's a potential project that could take quite a bit of discussion. But we already know that the plan is probably going to change from this because I think the planning board was concerned about taking down a building in Niskayuna to build a parking lot to serve a fast food restaurant in the city of Schenectady. <laughs> so they were more thinking like, what if you, you know, put a small building on the front of Union Street um, to provide some, you know, life to the Union Street on the Niskayuna side of the lot line and stuff like that. But if mm-hmm. you guys had, you know, any questions or thoughts or comments while they're thinking of other ideas and options for this property, I can certainly... Um, pass them on um you know one of the things that they talked about at the planning board was potentially adding more green space and some ev parking spaces there because you could do like an ev parking lot uh to the public so that it wasn't only just serving that restaurant because the restaurant doesn't actually need all of those spaces um but they feel like the building in this guna would is not worth saving i guess it's in pretty poor shape it is. yeah so so yeah it's a it's a it's a tough one laura had a couple of questions on that so they have 53 parking spaces how big is the building because it's i mean that bank it doesn't have ten thousand square feet does it yeah no, and they're not actually proposing to change the building. Um, yeah. And we've reached out to the city of Schenectady to get a little more information from their planner directly. But the applicant at the last planning board meeting thought they needed about 30, I'd say, right, Clark, somewhere in the range of 30 to 35 parking spaces. So there's extra, which is why we were yeah. saying maybe you could take some of those away and put in a mixed-use building or more trees or parking Um but, it, but you do have to be careful with the life and the character of the street as well. As one of the- yeah. You know what's odd about that, though, is if you look at the Nishki unit code, I mean, it was a bank, and if it becomes a restaurant, it's the same number of spaces. It's 200 um, square feet per space. So, you know, if this building was in Nishki Una, we wouldn't be having this conversation. Just <laughs> they should, yeah. I, I don't know if that has any bearing. I mean... Uh, I agree. Well, the urban, the urban character of the street needs to be protected. Right. I mean, it, as proposed, it's actually not allowed by code because you can't just put a parking lot up in the town of Niskuna for the sake of a parking lot. Um, yeah. But, you know, you guys could drive by and think about it, or you know, um, or if you have some thoughts of. Like, you know, this is like, we really got to think about this. I can pass them on to the planning board or you can just start paying attention to that parcel and thinking about it. Because I think we will see it again. The the house is a uh, former residential house or, or what kind of house is it? It was, a, it was mixed use. So it had commercial on the bottom and an apartment on the top, I think. Okay. Were you saying something, Clark? 
I was just going to say that one of the things the planning board had a little bit of concern about, and I think the applicant really liked, was the two-lane drive-through on the, on the building. So um, I don't I don't know how that's going to play out. Yeah, I you know it's the site too. I mean, this um, it's three lanes. This site where the parking lot is is right behind the building that um, <laughs> on that they're gonna um, the trees down. Eastern Boulevard that's going to get redone. The doctor's office. So there's going to be no trees. Oh, you mean the Lulisi project? Yeah. Yes, it's kitty corners to that one. Yes. Yeah, but if you took down that house, it'd be a clear shot all the way across. The Eastern um, Avenue. It's gonna look awful. Yeah, but it'll look low. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I don't know if you can hear, but Ellen's not in favor. No. I'd, I'd like to go there and take a look on Union Street. So the building is very in the front. Um, you know, I don't know if you can just convince the person not to pave the whole entire thing, and to you know instead you know be, um, to Put the parking spaces and so so the union built that union that a bank has a three a three drive through. There's a it's a three drive through that ends up coming out to two, but there's three slots in there. So um, but uh, but it does come out to two and it's very it's not particularly easy to take a left hand turn there at all because you have. It's not, and uh, but anyways, I would hope that the um, the building next to it, if they, I mean, it is not in particularly, it's not in good condition. But if they could just take the building down, and then maybe it would be lovely if they could do grass and trees behind it, and that would be a nice barrier to the people that are buying the new house, and then you know do the front with you know the parking and the electric. Oh, the EV chargers. Yeah, or you know, or. I don't know. So they're thinking that somebody's going to come and go into a fast food restaurant and charge their car. Like, no, actually, I think they were saying, and this was brought up by one of the planning board members, that that it's hard to park on Union Street sometimes, and it would be nice to have a little kind of off street public parking where you could charge your cars, so that you could just be visiting Union Street in total. Um, I don't oh, yeah. think you would get EV, I mean, that, EV charging stations for that fast food restaurant that you don't typically see. EV, that's right. not a normal thing for a fast food because people just don't stay long enough. Right. Does Mr. Wasabi have parking behind him? Uh, or Union Cafe? Yeah, Mr. Wasabi's does. I thought the previous um, hardware store. Yeah, because the hardware store did, but I didn't know if he kept it. It's only like five spots, right? Yeah. Okay. I know Union Cafe does. Okay, they do have parking behind it. I have never. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm looking, Laura. If you if you scroll down to the next picture on the packet, yeah, there you can sort of see. The next one. I mean, I I personally think that putting in parking lots on along the street line is probably the worst possible thing that you can do in an area you're trying to develop a downtown it it just leads to blight we should be doing everything we can to get the buildings moved up to the um, street line i think that bank is pretty close to the street line and either putting parking behind in the back and schenectady has public parking in the next block yeah they do yeah um, that, that was, I think definitely the sense of definitely some of the planning board members is that they didn't want to lose a building, you know, in this precious part of union street. And if it's going to be redeveloped, they wanted to see at least something along the street. Yeah. So, so it's my understanding that the person owns both, build, both lots. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. well, I'm sorry. I didn't hear that. That the person owns both lots. So, yeah. So how are you going to stop them? Well, they can't just put a parking lot up in the town of Niskiuna. So, um, is that the line right there? Yes, the line. Uh, the line. Oops, the line is right here. Oops, sorry. The line. Okay. It's not actually the pink one. It's at a little bit of an angle. <laughs> you can see it in your drawing. 
So, I mean, Chairman, it's up to you if you want to pull the, the board. Um, you could just keep this in your mind and drive by and see what you think. Or you could, you know, like if the general consensus is, yeah, we'd also like to see a building, you know, we can send that onto the planning board as well or something like that. Yeah, I don't know. How do people feel about that? Or do you want to take some time? Well, um, I think I'm in agreement that uh, a, a parking lot is not good. You know, like if you like, like you said, like you know, if you're trying to revitalize downtown, and you know, like if, if the parking lot is just about the worst thing you can put in there. So we can do a typical CAC recommendation and say less parking, a building, and more green space. <laughs> I think that's. I, I think I'm okay with that. You know. Yeah, I mean, I, I could support something like that. I don't know how does how's the rest of the committee feel. Yeah, I'm not a big but, fan of <laughs> parking lots, but yeah. you could throw some. You know, you could take out two sets of parking spots and put some trees in there, and you know, come out and put tree. You know, do three spots, some trees. <laughs> And I, I like the idea of having like an urban green space, possibly. You don't really have as, as much urban green space, especially on Union. So it'd be cool maybe for like a outdoor eating area with more trees and, and greenery because um, they definitely don't need all that space. See, I'm, I'm surprised the developer is not thinking about putting the building because he could, we could have green space, we could have a building and there'd be more than enough spots and outside eatery as well. If you removed the existing building and built it in Niskiyuna? If you removed the existing building and he just pulled the problem with the building where it is, it's too far back from the street. If you see where it is, so if he removes it and he brings it up to where in line where the bank is, I mean, that could work really well for him. I think they did kind of talk about that at the planning board meeting, didn't they? Laura? Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. So because that gives, that gives you a principal use on the Niskayuna lot. And then I guess they would just be allowing what's currently the bank. They would be allowing them to use their parking. Is that how that would work? So yeah, yeah, you could just share the parking among the two retail stores. I yeah, that, that, it, that definitely came up and was discussed at the planning board meeting. Okay, so I was hearing um, bring building closer to street, share parking, and create urban green space with maybe outdoor eating area, trees, and greenery. We can wish. <laughs> I don't know. Does that fit, Ellen? Is that okay or Chelsea? Yeah, that works for me. I think it's a good, at least something to suggest for them to think about. Yeah, I, I think it's a good idea to put our, our opinions out there early. Diana, do you go, do you guys go down to Union Street a lot? Like, is there a perspective that you have on that? Um, I mean, I agree with the urban green space idea because, like, I think a lot of people my age are starting to drive and stuff, so they do go down there a lot. I mean, kind of nice like hangout area. Yeah, I like that idea too. Ask her what would draw them down there. How how expensive would it be to? tear out the asphalt and make, I guess, soil where trees and plants can grow? Like, um, I don't know. What is, Ryana, do you, or, um, do you, what is it that draws um, high schoolers to Union Street, just the shopping and the restaurants? Yeah, I think like, I don't know, the cafes and like, I think it's just a different atmosphere from like, I don't know, the high school. Missing area. Yeah, like yeah, the opposite of Shoprite Plaza. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it, I, it's actually pleasant. Just we eat at Union Cafe Cafe all the time, and it's really nice to eat outside and just sort of watch the street. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So if you guys are okay, we'll pass those comments on to Planning Board, and then drive by and take a look, and we'll keep you updated. Sounds good. 
Okay, um, let's go through the reports. We've already talked about the low mo, but let's start with the Climate Smart Community Grant. So I just wanted to keep you guys updated. Um, the Clim Climate Smart Community Grant was accepted by the town board a, a week, or, about a week ago. Um, and so the Climate Smart Community Task Force met on Monday and they're working on a couple initiatives, um, but I think with that grant, which we're extremely grateful for, um, we should be able to hopefully be Climate Smart certified by the end of this year if we can pull it all together and make our timelines work. So that's very exciting. And then um, the second one is the natural resources Invent oh, well, sorry, I did it backwards, but there's um, a new grant that came out, the Community Forest Conservation Grant, and we might be able to tie that one into the Natural Resources Inventory, too. So we've got one, and now we've targeted a second one for kind of a different process. But very So did you attend that um, webinar this, was it today or was it this week? It was today, and, uh, and uh, myself and Laura attended it. Oh, good. Was there um, anything that you wanted to share with the committee on that or? Um, so it's, um, I think that the main points are to take are that, I mean, the state truly wants to buy a uh, privately owned forest land and conserve it for all of the reasons that I think most people on this committee know how forests serve our community and help mitigate climate change and things of that nature. But I'd say that the main restrictions or things to think about is that the parcel has to be over 10 acres, has to be privately owned. And you need a letter, a uh, binding letter that that person would be willing to sell it to you for X amount in order to be able to submit a grant application. So um, there's a couple areas, you know, that I can see in the town. Of, oh, and it has to be for public use. So they, um, you know, so they would like to see it have to, you know, be connected to trails, how the public can access it, what, you know, what good it can serve if there's areas in that you know, around those 10 acres that are currently underserved, things like that are all things that they consider. So I have a couple ideas. <laughs> When's know. the timeline on that? Laura? Say April 23rd, I think it's the deadline. Yeah. So we have to move relatively quickly, I think, to secure uh, what the price would be and a letter of, uh, you know, consent from a private landowner. That is a tight timeline to create that actually. Yeah. So what's the what's the likelihood that if you got all these things in place that you would get the grant? Um, you know, you, you never know because it's the first round, but DEC forestry grants on their own when you're doing like the urban forestry uh, street tree master plans and inventories and things like that are very competitive. You know, mm -hmm. me being me, I was scrolling up and down and seeing who was on the webinar and counting how many there were. <laughs> but the webinar yeah. is not going to be an indication probably of who submits. So my guess is it's competitive. But the thing that's going to weed people out is the short time frame and having to get commitment from a, a private landowner. So it's obviously communities are going to have a leg up if they've already got a parcel in mind that they've been mm -hmm. negotiating over. Um, yeah, I can volunteer to write it. Yeah. Well, we can work on it together. It's different than the other one that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I assume it would be like, uh, do we have the, you know, the, the account with the portal yes, and, uh, have and all, all those yes. things uh, uh, set up? Yes. So if you have a couple of ideas, like I'm happy to talk offline and, um, and, and start, uh, start writing it, uh, I, I, can, I can do that. Yeah, what I think is really going to help with that grant is that we just started our natural resource inventory. So even if we can yeah. get our natural resources inventory subcommittee of the CAC <laughs> to say this is the parcel that, you know, we are identifying through our committee as being mm -hmm. the most advantageous right now to preserve, mm -hmm. you know, that could go a long way. The CAC can write a letter of support. I think we can put together a pretty strong grant uh, if we want, you know, can target some areas. Yeah, I think we just have to come through those areas relatively quickly. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't know, Ashok, if you were listening, the question of whether or not you can have multiple parcels like combined for 10 acres. I thought that was interesting. They didn't really answer. But I think even if they don't, we can, we have areas that are a single owner that are over 10 acres that we could go for. So. Sure. Sure. Okay. Well, that's really um, exciting. I hope we can leverage it. 
and uh, mentioned it to the supervisor. Haven't brought it up to the whole town board, but did seem to have early initial support because it's only a 10% match. 10% yeah, yeah. cash, but even if you had $100,000, you're only spending $10,000 on, you know, an over 10-acre yep. parcel. So it's a pretty easy win for the town of Niskuna if they can get the grant. Now, I, in general, I like writing grant applications. I think, like, even if it's a failed application, the very act of going through it and talking to people and educating people, like, really has a beneficial effect. Yeah. All right. Um, I, Laura, I'd be interested in discussing some specifics um, with you. And I shook. Um, maybe we should set up another um, discussion. Yeah, because in, in some ways, you know, in some of the work that the NRI has already been doing, yeah, like some of the outreach is a little bit on the down low because you don't yeah. want to scare away people. <laughs> right. So yeah, we'll have to do, um, we'll have to figure out exactly what our plan of action is on, you know, on the land that we want to go for. Would, would, okay. would uh, Friday afternoon work for uh, either one of you to meet offline? Yeah, I mean, we can do it virtually. I'm hoping for like 10 inches of snow, but I, you know, we can do a virtual meeting so it doesn't really matter where we are. Sure, sure, virtual yeah, meeting's we fine. We do it virtually, I think that's fine. Yeah. I'll have to call in though. <clears throat> yeah. And so if you guys take a look at a map and you have some ideas, you know, send send them on far away. I was doing I was measuring all morning when I was in the webinar, <laughs> trying to see what's <laughs> <10 acres. laughs> and it can't be publicly owned. It has to be private. Yeah. And I mean, uh the town of Niskayuna aside, even if we didn't get the grant, I mean, the state is aiming at conserving as much land as they possibly can for forests, um, for future public enjoyment and to mitigate climate change and the grant should um, be for a million dollars across the state. So that's pretty cool. Minimum of $50,000. Maximum. What of you said, the, you said the limit is a million. So the, the, the total grant amount across the whole state is oh. a million. The minimum that you can submit is 50,000. The maximum is 300,000. Okay. It'd be unusual probably for people to max the 300,000. That would be unusual. And obviously, you know, the state may have one that's up there, but I think they'll, They'll not want to do just three projects. I think they'll try and want to spread it out as much as possible. Mm, yeah. So, like, no, you know, I mean, I'm just thinking if you live downstate, you have to buy 10 acres um, of private land. $300,000 is not going to get you very far. And, you know, they're going to look at leveraging their money as far as they possibly can. So, yeah. you know, if the person donating the land will discount it, it's worth a million dollars and you can buy it for 300000 That might be, you know. We might yeah. have to something like that, but <laughs> it doesn't go for development rights. You can't just purchase development rights with the money. No, this is very serious. You can't have yeah. mineral rights underneath it or anything. I mean, this is going to be forest conservation, and it has to be forest. So okay. yeah, and uh, they they briefly talked about the uh, their scoring rubric. Um, if you if you if you get the title to it, you score higher than if you if you get the easement. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. All right. Why don't we uh, move on to the pesticide outreach update? Um, Do you have any updates or? So um, basically what I just did was I just created, um, I haven't, I haven't sent them on to Laura or anything, but I, I basically did a month by month uh, or not month by month, but season by season um, what you can do to try to turn your lawn from um you know, from pesticide, you know, from, or, you know, to make it organic. And then, um, so I, can I say, can I say what Clifton Park is doing? Um, yeah. Okay. So, um, so Clifton Park um, has on their website, they have a link of how to, um, of how to, um, hold on one second. I'm sorry. I'll pull it up. I, because I, 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 I propped it. I didn't know we were going right here. Um, so on their website, they um, basically um, had, you know, ways to become, you know, uh, maintain, you know, to become pesticide free. And the first thing is they want you to watch a video about maintaining a pesticide free lawn. And basically that's our, 
that's the um, our meeting that we had with the um, with um, David Chinnery. Yeah, David from um, from um, from uh, Cornell Cooperative. So the first link on their thing is to us. So that was kind of nice. But then um, they did something um, very interesting. They did it. Um, they offered an organic lawn uh, care thirty hour course in uh, the in February of twenty twenty. And um, basically was it, um, and it was in, you know, it coincided with, um, it's called the, um, the, it was for, it's for Connecticut and it's the um, Northeast Organic Farming Association, but it's the Connecticut um, one because they allow for, they um, are in charge, they, they specify in um, development for lawn care. So they, they hide, they had this and then they're, um, they had 30 participants, but then they basically put down landscapers' names and numbers on their website of, of who uh, does this. So um, I took to calling each one of these and speaking to them and seeing um, who might be interested or if any of them would be willing to work in um, Niskayuna, because I think that's one of our um, one of the links that is um, we're struggling with is being able to offer people who want to be organic but don't want to do it themselves so currently um grasshopper um you know does this so um they're the only ones that do it that you know that provide the lawn service everybody else um has one other you know like two people um didn't answer me one person you know she's a single person she does you know, organic uh, plantings and taking, you know, and trimming of, tr you know, trees and stuff like that. So, I mean, she would be happy, I think, if we, you know, put this together. But I kind of wanted to be able to put some of this information together and put it up for on our own website and to find out what the ramifications for that. And then also, um, it's called uh, uh, Peak Environmental, I believe it's what it's called, Peak Environmental. And basically they do businesses only. So they're putting together an organic package for businesses so that they can roll out an, or, you know, an organic pass and they only do businesses. So that was about as far as I got. And I did like a, a you know, a step-by-step, -step, um, you know, how to month by month what to do. And so I have to now get that to Laura and then, see how we can put it up on the website. And, and then the next I think is we just have to, I just have to, if anybody has any ideas, I, I'm not particularly, it seems like I don't get anything done from month to month, <laughs> but I, you lot, Ellen. I don't know, just, but, um, you know, I would like to uh, start, you know, next with, you know, compo composting. So, and reaching out to either boys and girls scouts and, seeing if there's anything that I can do, you know, with them. So that's about it. So that's it. Ellen, do you have plans to re the, do a second round of the signs? So oh. I'm not going to make it, and we're not going to buy any more signs, but I, okay. I, so I think my next step is I really have to figure out how to go from community to community to then, you know, um, have, presentations on organic and I really don't know what other to say other than it's really bad you know I mean I have I mean there's all the you know all of the information behind it but I don't want to like yeah so the signs are available for purchase at any time yes. but like maybe when spring rolls around again and we do an email blast or one of Ellen's email blasts we can say like you know ready to take the next step take the pesticide free pledge or maybe that can be at the end of every monthly email that we blast or whatever so that more people it gets out there more but you can buy them at any time yeah so i mean i you know i would um so i mean earth day is coming up and they're going to be doing the planting you're right like they'll give away the trees so i'm hoping that again bring they'll the that we could yeah, um, bring the signs we could do the signs and this time i'll find out i'll i'll try to make sure i have that day off from work so i can be there <laughs> and then um and uh yeah so I think I'm going to continue to go to the um, farmers markets this summer and and do that. So, but I feel like there's like we there's like we need to do like one more thing. We have to, there's something else. I don't know. I guess maybe go community to community. I you know or to other 
I we have I have to go to them, so I have to figure out how to do that. You mean like neighborhood to neighborhood? Yeah. 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 So I think you know, Ellen, I think you're accomplishing a lot. Yeah, a lot. <laughs> month to month. Yes, you are. <laughs> well, if you want to do a door to door or something like that, I'll totally come with you. Okay. <laughs> I feel like I need, yeah, need to get together like a tiny, like a little. I, I mean, I was going to talk to Laura offline, but I need to do like a get together, like a small little presentation or something so that, you know, we could give it to the Girl Scouts or to the Boy Scouts so that, you know, because it would be nice if, you know, even, you know, pesticide free, they could like maybe build a birdhouse or plant wildflowers or, you know, you know, these kind of things, you know, too. Well, and even you're reaching families if the Girl Scouts bring the pledges home with them and then right. get their parents mm -hmm. do it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the 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 library has a fairly large room, uh, where, like a community room, where where you can hold events. Like we've been holding our NRI meetings there. Um, you know, so you could you could totally to do a presentation the, I, there. I need to take the step and put together a presentation. Oh God. Okay. And they, they they have a they have a screen. Um, yeah. Uh, and a project is a, a small projector. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think it's funny that this, this the Clifton Park links to our uh, Growing a Great Lawn Seminar. But that was the most well-attended, you know, non-town board, somebody's upset with development event that I have ever seen in town hall. There were more people here than I've ever seen. Like, you know, it was absolutely packed. It was pre-COVID and every single seat in this room was filled. Every okay. single one. <laughs> All right. So maybe we need to just put it out there and... See what happens. Yeah, I really think that that interests people and they like it and they care. Okay. Yeah. I wish there was, was something tangible like that you could come away with, you know, besides being pesticide free, you know, like, yeah. All right. Okay. Okay. Protect your kids and your fur babies. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's it. All right. Ashok, did you just want to mention the next NRI meeting or did you want to talk about yeah, it? Yeah, why don't you? Um, yeah, sure. Um, so, you know, the, we, the, the, the paperwork, everything is done. Jim is uh, officially hired to start the NRI project. Uh, we talked a little bit offline and uh, I always believe that, uh, you know, the, the, the NRI should not be just... Um, a bunch of us getting together and, and, and talking about it and doing it. Uh, uh, the community involvement is, uh, is, is key. Uh, we have the working group uh, a meeting scheduled for uh, Thursday of next week. Uh, that's uh, Thursday, February 10th at uh, 7 p.m. It's a Zoom meeting. Uh, Jim will be presenting, and uh, he said uh, he has a bunch of things that... Uh, that that uh, he can like parcel out to individual members of the uh, working group so that it can be a community effort. Uh, we we want people uh, to become part of the working group. The workload, you know, it's a little bit flexible. Uh, people can contribute as much as they want to. We are particularly interested in getting people uh, to join the working group from. Um, let's say underrepresented uh, corners. Um, uh, personally, I really would like representation from the people who live in apartments. I mean, they may be temporary, they may not be homeowners, but for the duration they are here, they're very much Niskayuna residents. I'd like uh, some participation from uh, local businesses. Um, you know, we've been uh, talking to um, a bunch of people in uh, GE and others and asking, say, hey, can you give us a couple of people uh, to sit in our working group? So uh, it's happening, and, uh, and, and I'm super excited about it. Sounds good. Okay, it looks like we've gone through all the agenda items. Laura, do you have any other items you care to discuss? I do not. Okay. Would someone like to make a uh, motion to adjourn? I'll make the motion to adjourn. Do we have a second? 
I'll second. Okay, great. Do we have any people that are against adjourning? No. Hearing none, we're adjourned. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Good night, guys.